Lexi Donarski is back. Uh, she was battling an injury coming into this tournament. Did not play in the first half. They played her out of necessity in the second half. And she contributed to their comeback. The tip is knocked to Uski to start the night. And UNC's got the ball first. A change in their starting lineup. Actually, two changes. This is Kayla McPherson at the point guard spot. A redshirt sophomore did not start yesterday, but is out there to begin the game today. And uh, then Donarski, of course, the other change for Carolina. McPherson kicks to Donarski. They drop it down low to Gopdang. Lefty floater, no good. And there is Ayoka Lee drawing the foul. The major interior presence for the Wildcats. This is Serena Sundell, who led Kansas State yesterday with 21 points. Osby swats it away. She wants to run. Osby changes direction and lays it in with the right. That is a picture-perfect Alyssa Osby play. Uh, so we'll see how that one plays out. I'm sure we'll see Renaya off the bench. There is Glenn for three, and it's no good. There is Lee for the offense. Establishing herself as a scorer, and that is why McPherson is starting. <laughs> For the Wildcats, it was a 16-point win against Western Kentucky, a team that came out this morning and won a consolation game. Sides, hustling, feeds it inside for Lee. Kelly had it blocked by Glenn. And Kansas State builds a little momentum. Sides drops it down for Gregory. Who clicks, kicks to Jalen Glenn. Gregory, a long three, it's good! Well, the good thing for K-State is that she's involved early. Almost contagious for themselves. Uh, as that one goes in and out. Well, she doesn't need to touch, uh, she doesn't need to score every single time, but running the offense through Lee is to K-State's advantage. Get her the basketball when she posts up. Osby didn't have a spot to shoot from. Yeah, Whatever it takes. Amber got some details that she didn't have time to share in the story, but there was actually a conscious effort in the summer to create something that would motivate the defense, and it was actually the captains that came together and came up with the GOAT idea. As Sanchez turns, 12-foot fadeaway is pure. Doesn't need to score, but can score. Boxes out, chases down, rebounds. Donarski with a good look for three, in and out. A rare miss for Donarski. There's Walker into the game for K-State. Boy, a lot of height and length with that guard group for the Wildcats. Sanchez had the pass deflected. That leads Sundell towards the lane. Carolina was looking for a travel there. Obviously the foul occurred. Maybe it's game time. Tip. More intensity. More energy. I am concerned without the lead how long that they can keep that energy up. It kind of reminds me of how they came out at halftime yesterday as Poole misses the jumper, the number 11 mid-major in the nation. Walker gets the handoff all the way through, missed the layup, offensive rebound and put back. Gokdang, of course, has to be really careful. As she'll be out into the third quarter if she picks up another one. Kelly lobs for Gokdang. Has it at the elbow. Now Kelly. Kelly pulls up, jumper pure. Harris, a sophomore, is taking on a scoring role off the bench, but quiet so far in this tournament. Sanchez along two. A really strong start for the Wildcats. A 10-point lead. Seven seconds. Bounce pass. Donarski with four. They've got a hoist. Pass goes inside. They got it off, and that'll count for Usby. K-State got stuck thinking they were looking for the three. The senior goes back door, easy layup. Gulf Coast Showcase Semifinal. We've got Iowa and Florida Gulf Coast coming up next. But first, a matchup of top 20 teams inside Hertz Arena. Donarski comes up short on the jumper. This is a, a similar cold start to what we saw from Carolina yesterday. They haven't hit a three yet. They only hit two yesterday, both by Donarski. Yeah, two for 16 in that game. We have a foul before the shot, and it's going to be... Only this year, women's basketball no longer has that as a demarcation. As long as the defender has established position and gets plowed over, it is an offensive foul. And, of course, we had a men's tournament here Monday through Wednesday, so that's why the line is there. And now a three-second call. Chose to stay, work on her game in the high school level another year, and they've been so pleased with her passing ability, her shots coming along. Really a solid freshman 
Oh, Lee with a quick release. Missed the fadeaway, and Usby pulls it down. Denarski. Iowa State transfer along two. That one rattles out. Knocked around underneath. Usby ends up with it. Here's Paris. Down the lane. Lefty. Big shot is good. She was shut out yesterday and in the previous game against Elon. That is a, a much-needed scoring option for North Carolina. Glenn from the corner. Bangs it through. Oh, Usby stuck, eventually gets it to Janarski, but it's taken away. Here comes Jalen Glenn for two. Let's keep going, let's keep going, let's work through this. They've got a pretty offensive group in there right now. All four guards that are out there can really score. Kelly with a heck of a move. Lefty layup is good. Started really slow, and ultimately from... Again, a ball screen involving Kelly and Lee. Sundell lets it fly and connects. After their first round win, Sundell herself said, I need to be more aggressive. I need to look for my shot. That one does not fall, but first free throw, too strong. It was a senior. Yeah, the speed of the defense also affects how quickly they get down court on offense as we've got a travel call. McPherson snaps one. Kelly, a contested three. Might have been touched by Sanchez. McPherson went flying for the rebound. I beg your pardon. That was uh, India Navarre. Sundell off the glass. Count it. To control for Carolina. Tries to get around Sundell and banked it in. Players miss from the outside. I feel like McPherson is keeping them together right now. Yes. This is the free throw, though. That's becoming a trend. North Carolina, number 18 in the rankings, and K-State 16. There it is. Kelly around the screen. Pulls up from the elbow. No. And Lee pulls it down with two hands. Two for eight now is Deja Kelly. And she shoots it in the 30s, a little bit below that early on. Gregory lobs. Lee one-on-one -on -one over the defender. Gets the roll. She's got... Her pet post moves, difficult to defend. When she establishes herself low in the block, game over. 6.7 rebounds so far for Lee. Well below her scoring average, but still effective. Usby with another strong rebound. Now one of two preseason all-conference picks in the ACC. So that could be part of the growing pains here early in the season. I say, I say growing pains. They haven't lost a game yet this season. As we've got a referring to those game notes, Courtney Banghart has not lost a game at Carolina in the month of November. And I love what the game notes said about Coach Banghart. We got to learn about her hitchhiking trip through Alaska and her opportunity to be on CBS's Amazing Race, which ultimately fell just a little bit short. But she was interviewed to be on the show with her brother. Some really good fun facts that we would otherwise not be aware of. She was also a nominee for one of the 50 most uh, influential women in the United States. A list that included some household names that you're very much aware of. There's a lot. That was when she was at Princeton and was building one of the best mid-major programs in the country. There's a good finish. Seven to shoot. Glenn with a heck of a move, but missed the layup. Nice behind the back to escape the, defend, uh, the defenders. Navarre leans in, no good, but Renaya Kelly is there. Carolina will have the final shot here as long as they can get the rebound on K-State's opportunity. Sundell, a lot of dribbling, flips it to Sanchez. Great move all the way to the rim for the layup. Really poor closeout there by Alyssa Usby, and Sanchez took advantage. I didn't know she had that kind of quickness off the dribble. Gisela Sanchez all the way to the rim. Final 10 seconds, Donarski. Using the screen, gets by Lee, kicks to the corner. Usby kicks, one second to go. That shot will count if it goes, but it does not. As the three from Navarre is off the mark, and it will be a 10-point lead. John Vitas alongside Marin Walseth, and Wildcats will have the ball first with a 10-point lead, Marin, and uh, I'm sure a lot for uh, North Carolina to address in the locker room at halftime. They come out in a 3-2 zone initially. On the offensive end, I'd like to see Carolina establish Maria Gakdang in the post. 
Lob inside. Lee couldn't handle it. Glenn saves it and gets it to Lee. Shot clock down to six. Glenn inside. Floater, no. Right, Usby has the rebound, and here comes McPherson. Starting five out there for both teams. McPherson. A little too aggressive. Head coach Courtney Banghart raises her hand like, I don't see it the same thing you did. There's, if there's one person K-State may you know, try and diagram something for or really force into the, the flow of the offense, it's got to be her. A little bit slow start to the season as Kelly is open for three and got it to this third quarter. Gregory's pass taken away by Deja Kelly. And numbers if they hurry. Kelly got met by two defenders. And Usby now will back it out. Wisely looking to set up a set call. Ensure they have a quality shot. McPherson had a steam, gets blocked, but a foul. A lot of momentum. And with intense as well as she makes the... Only a sophomore makes the second as well. It was kind of gripping that right thigh, but seems to be okay as North Carolina sets up the press. There's a lob. Lee underneath lays it in. It almost feels like cheating. Hand it out nicely. And Donarski pulls the trigger. That's no good. Walker with a strong rebound. Yeah, they're calling it tight here early in the third, trying to make sure this game is clean the rest of the way. Sundell. Comes back towards the middle, has a little space inside, puts up the floater, and very patient there. And Serena Sundell has a nice high release, much taller guard. The game just seems to move a little bit slower for her than some other folks. Nine points for Sundell after she led the Wildcats in scoring yesterday. Kelly picking away at the baseline, gives it to Poole. Nice drop step and the lay-in for Anya Poole. Again, attacking the basket, being the aggressors. Four fouls for each squad here. The next foul, every foul here on out, someone's going to the foul line. Glenn, too strong. Walker comes to the rebound. Other corner, Gregory, defended by Usby, resets. Glenn gives it back to Walker, who lost it. Donarski's got it. One-on-one -on -one with Sundell. Donarski puts it up off the window and scores. Usby fended off. Donarski, the two-point jumper is good. One for seven before that make. And Carolina has made this a one-possession game. Continue with the trapping up around half court. They were down ten at halftime and already are within three. Skip pass near side, Walker. Back up to Sundell, high lob, Lee draws the foul. Wildcats were okay if that turned into a turnover because the only person that was gonna be able to catch it was Lee. Staying on the bench. Carolina is playing, I wouldn't say small ball, but they don't have the same height. There's a pull up for Kelly, you bet. And conversely, Carolina has been four for four in their last four trips. We call that a reverse goat. <laughs> Sundell inside with a great hesitation. Carolina sticking with that zone defense. Kind of stretching out towards half court and then dropping back. Walker will let it fly from the corner. She's got it. From the weak side. Donarski tees one up and hit. Floater, Walker, no. Carolina looking to push it. The shot clock, though, is off. And now they'll reset. I thought Kelly turned it over there. Two of the top 20 teams in the country locked in a good one. Seven seconds, Usby. Donarski curls. And it's blocked by Lee. Glenn from half court at the buzzer, a little bit short. And a good stop from the Wildcats at the end of three. It's K-State 45 and North Carolina 40. Marin, I'm sure you, while you coached at North Dakota State, the team bonding, especially in the preseason, is so important. Bringing your new players in, transfers or first year, 
uh, high school kids, bringing those new players into the fold, helping them understand the culture, how things are, uh, how things operate, what the policies and the procedures are, so important to making them feel comfortable. How about that, the whitewater rafting? That's not normally in the coach's playbook. But I think it's the, it goes back to the, you know, adrenaline junkie, Courtney Bangard at the controls, uh, not afraid to uh, push the envelope a little bit, letting her team uh, enjoy themselves in the summer and try some, some new things. And these are memorable experiences, too. Just over nine minutes remaining in this ball game, Kansas State holding a five-point lead. Sanchez tees one up and splashes it through. Beautiful shot from Sanchez. She knew that was going down the minute it left her hands. She was backpedaling before it went through the hoop. How about a 6-3 wing who can shoot like that? She's got at least 25. Carolina was able to get into three in that third quarter. Does that three not set a tone or what? Backbreaking if you're Carolina at this point. And they worked hard to get it down to five as Navar is able to score through traffic. Potentially. Potentially. Sanchez gets it to Glenn. Sanchez, the fake, all the way through. Righty scoop, didn't get the roll, but will go to the free throw line. They're much more rounded in the teaching of the basketball, of the game of basketball overseas. <laughs> She's got height so and length and moves really well, yes, too. <laughs> that one off the mark. Donarski the rebound. I mean. Those yeah. are big misses at the free throw line. <laughs> Not able to extend the lead, and Carolina has it. Kelly, working on Sundell, pulls up from the lane and gets the roll. Gregory lobs to Lee, the help comes. Lee fights through it and gets blocked by Poole. Poole was very disciplined there, just staying straight up. Poole dribbling now, will reset to Kelly. A dozen for Deja Kelly in a timeout. Well, another double-double for Ioka Lee. Ten points and ten rebounds, moving her into esteemed company. She ties the school record for double-doubles with 52. That's a lot of points, a lot of rebounds. She's join, or She joins Kendra Wecker this weekend. And with one more, possibly tomorrow, here in Estero, maybe can break the record. Navar off the window, cuts it to two. Nice shot fake. Defense did not go. India Navar still able to gather and finish high off the glass. Well, she has come alive here in the fourth quarter. Taryn Sides running the point right now. Gregory, Sundell both off the ball. It's a four-guard look for K-State. Sundell couldn't get the handle rising high, but a foul. Crowd continues to fill in. We're expecting the biggest crowd of the tournament for our 7.30 game tonight. Iowa against FGCU. And Iowa, of course, one of the most popular programs in the country right now. Rebound tapped out and Sides jumps on it. And a fresh 20 for K-State. A lead by three. Sundell, nowhere to go. Slings it the other way. Sides, a fake. Goes to the corner. Pass was deflected. Gregory saw that it went off the Tar Heels. Or does North Carolina get a shot at cutting it to one or tying? You may have seen during the timeout the North Carolina assistants asking where the inbound would be, trying to diagram a play against it. Wild shot from Glenn off the mark. Kelly around the screen. Bended off by Lee. Donarski in the face of Sundell missed it. She did not need to hesitate. It's almost like she was measuring the wingspan of Sundell and waited just a, a beat too long. So now it comes back to Carolina's defense. Can they get another stop? Sides. Fades and draws the foul. Who gets the first? Walker and Sanchez, you would think, are going to come back in at some point as Sides makes the second. She's also crashed the boards on both ends of the floor. She's they a taller defender. Getting some of Briley Glenn's minutes tonight. Glenn has only played 10 minutes, one of the starters for K-State. Pull with the catch. Kicks to Paris. Paris the three. In and out. And Lee high for the rebound. And the pass taken away by Poole. Not a good pass. On the wing, Paris will drive. The defense swarms, and she kicks it out. Final three and a half minutes. 
Kelly Overly gets the roll, and Kelly can tack on one more. Missed it. Navarre over the back for the rebound. No whistle. Kansas State clears. Carolina shooting 60% from the foul line. They have struggled from the floor, behind the line, from the foul line. Uh, same thing as yesterday, but still in this game. Their defense has kept a minute. A game that was played in the low 50s yesterday, and this one may end up in a similar spot. A 30-second timeout here for Jeff Mitty, and that at and one against Lee might be able to get her going even more. Sundell, screener kind of ditched early there, but a foul called. Oh, my goodness. Donarski, again, cannot believe it. 11th foul of the half for North Carolina. We're keeping track of it that way. A lot of whistles as Sundell makes the first. Perfect free throws from Sundell. K-State now 10 for 14 from the free throw line, and they lead by five with three minutes to go. Carolina does not have time or possessions to take risky shots. This is not equal offense opportunity at this point. Trying to find a hot hand. A lot of talented players out there. Donarski pulls up long two. Count it. That's a great shot. She waved Asia, uh, India Navarre through so that she could reject the ball or she could use the ball screen to the baseline side. And she did not need a lot of space to operate. Pretty jumper from Donarski. Sundell trying to cross over on her. Will use Lee and now give it up. Glenn. To Walker, eight to shoot. The lob for Lee, turns, and drops it in, right over Poole. Very efficient post move, no dribble needed. Oh, Kelly abandoned the screen, and now does get it to Donarski. Bounce pass, Poole with under two minutes to play. Working on Lee, and she scores, and draws the foul. Nobody was expecting Poole to try and shoot there. Poole with a chance for a three-point play. And does. Two-point game. Full court press from the Tar Heels. Sundell has shown tremendous composure. Walker into the middle. Gregory, the bounce pass. Not much developing yet. Off the foot of the offensive player. Here come the Tar Heels. McPherson leans in, missed the bank shot. And a tie up on the rebound. It will go to Kansas State. A catch radius a little bit larger <laughs> for her. Sundell will snap one to Glenn. And now there is Sanchez coming to the ball. As K-State spreads the floor and uses a little bit of clock. A two-point lead with 1-10 remaining. There's the lob. Lee catches. Didn't get the layup, but a foul on Usby, and she is done. K-State wisely goes to their bread and butter. The high-low. As Lee makes the first. And tack on one more for Ioka Lee, who tied the school record for double-doubles earlier tonight. And now the Wildcats have gone with five guards or five players who can guard the guards. I I'm sure this is a defensive adjustment, allowing them to switch all screens just as they did. If K-State gets a stop here, they are in control. There's the pass. Paris open. No. Sundell brings down the rebound. And Kansas State is in control. Does Carolina have to foul here? Carolina does not have time. Yeah, there it is. Donarski will foul. And K-State is in the bonus. So Sundell will go to the line. And Sundell lines up the free throws. I would expect Carolina to call a timeout to advance the basketball. Missed that one short. Sanchez got a hand on it, but Kelly controls. Five-point lead for K-State. North Carolina needs to score. Gregory comes flying in, and it's pulled away by Sundell. They turn Kelly over, and the Wildcats have control. Just a little bit too much of Kelly one-on-one. -on -one. 
And the help defense was there. Sundell missed again. Second one. Gets the roll. So Paris will send it in with 28.9 on the clock. McPherson, one-on-one, -on -one, gets inside and scores. Beautiful play drawn up by Courtney Banghart. So can cut it to one possession if she can make this free throw. Carolina just 7 for 12 at the line tonight. And make it 8 for 13. A one-possession game and now a timeout from Jeff Mitty. And we can see she is coming along really nicely for North Carolina. They get it to Lee. She's the outlet player here. They're not fouling her, though. They get it to Sanchez now, and they have to foul. As Sanchez will go to the line. She missed two earlier, so maybe they were holding out to try and get her to the line, which I guess worked. Lee to the bench. Sanchez lines up the first. And it's good. Got them both. And a timeout from Coach Banghart to advance the basketball. Donarski around the screen. A good ball fake. The three is blocked. Sundell wasn't even looking at her, but got the block. And a foul on Sanchez. She will go to the free throw line. Lining up another free throw. And it's good. But make it a three-score game. And now if you're Carolina, you probably have to go for a three. And it is a seven-point game. 14 seconds to go. Carolina now down by three possessions. McPherson turns. They get it to Kelly. They've got to hurry. Here comes Donarski. Nine seconds left. They still don't got to sh have a shot. And Sundell receives the carom off the block. And she will dribble out the clock. Nothing doing on that possession for North Carolina. And it's the Wildcats of Kansas State moving on to the Gulf Coast Showcase Championship.